My name is Mark Shaw. I'm the director of the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime. I'm at USIP to talk about our work together and continuing to partner with the Institute. I think the idea that it, the U.S. assistance should just engage or, or be training of law enforcement or, or other institutions is not enough. There really does need to be a wider view uh, supporting research, and indeed the U.S. does support uh, work that the, the Global Initiative is doing, including uh, the Global Index uh, of Organized Crime. So really this changing of approach, this understanding this problem, the problem that is evolving very rapidly better, I think is all part of the package of, of what needs to be done. The impact is so multifaceted, so anything from the environment to health to education to conflict, I could go on, there's just this list of impacts. At heart it really affects people's livelihoods, their life chances, how they engage in economic activity, how they engage in social relations. I think people in the global north often don't understand the degree to which organized crime or criminal governance dominates uh, people's lives in different places in the world. This also occurs in, in, develop, in developed countries as well as developing countries, but it's really become quite marked in many places the degree to which communities and citizens live under criminalized forms of, of control. I think one of the big challenges is that because it's so multifaceted, we often don't really take it all together to add it up, if you like. Um, and so it's a slow drip of impact without any really dramatic uh, occasions when the light is shine on it, 50 people drowning in the Mediterranean, uh, linked to migrant smuggling. People then talk in greater detail around the issue. But taken together, the impact is vast. And we really need to do something about that in, in, by, by reducing the harms that illicit markets have. We've been doing or, or growing the work that we do in Asia quite dramatically. We've appointed new people, new analysts. We have a, a growing physical footprint in the region. And what we've been interested in doing is mapping or overlaying illicit flows with uh, the physical locality of uh, Belt and Road ini uh, Initiative infrastructure and the like to show that big infrastructure changes, what uh, historical research shows, really changes uh, trafficking routes. Trafficking is not, it occurs on the global highways of commerce, it's not hidden, it takes place in containers through established ports and the like. And so big infrastructure developments like that have an enormous impact on, on trafficking patterns. That's particularly so in this case because of the global scale of the illicit economy and the fact that Belt and Road Initiatives, uh, if you like, when you, w if you look on, on our website, you can see the connections. Uh, it, it is often mapping relatively, it, it is joining relatively vulnerable areas in Southeast Asia, uh, East Africa and the like. So um, that's the, 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 the work that, that we are undertaking. Part of that is also to, in Southeast Asia, but also elsewhere, is to look at the impact of special economic zones. So these are zones where, uh, the, where economic activity is less regulated, if you like, or, or not taxed. And some of these are very vulnerable to the growth of uh, illicit economy, uh, criminal activities and the like. So that's, that's what the work is focusing on. It's future oriented. And what we're trying to say is there are important ways of crime proofing this uh, as we go forward. Geopolitical tensions uh, being what they are now, I think the linkage between organized crime the politicization to some degree around some of the discussion around organized crime is all part of uh, the emerging, if you like, policy debate on, on what we believe is a crucial area. Mm -hmm.